do a measure by measure breakdown of Cleveland marching to the White House. This is as learned from Chris Cool. Uh, in case you didn't watch the mess around video that this lesson is associated with, going to make sure that you're in the right tuning. This tuning goes by a lot of names. I'll just give you the string names so you can get in the right place. Um, it's F, D, G, C, D. So your main four strings are tuned just like you would be in uh, modal tuning. Your fifth string, however, is tuned a step lower than it normally would be. So your, these four strings you can think of as in G modal, with your fifth string down from a G down to an F. Once you're sure you're in the right tuning, we'll go ahead and do the breakdown. Let's start with measure number one. Notice my left hand right off. Um, this is the main chord shape. This is your, in this tuning, your one chord is not very open like most, most claw hammer tunings. Uh, this one, your one chord, which is what most of the tune is going to be based around, is going to be a shape that requires you to fret three different notes. So we have our second finger on the third fret, fourth string. First finger is on the second fret, third string. Second string is open. And our third finger plays the third fret, first string. Make sure you have this shape down because this is what, like I said, this is where most of the tune is going to be played out of this shape right around it, some variation of it. So when we take a look at measure number one, go ahead and just hold that shape down the whole time. It's going to make it a lot easier. Here's measure number one. Notice my left hand doesn't move. It stays right where it is on this home chord shape. Right hand's just doing some knockdown exercises, basically. We'll play the fourth string, third string, second string, third string. All right, let's take a look at measure number two. Here we just need to grab that second fret first string and do a couple basic strums. That's pretty straightforward, so we'll go ahead and move on. We'll go to the third measure. Similar to the first, we're holding that chord shape again, our main chord shape. Start with some knockdowns. End with a hammer on there. Knock down. Boom. Boom. That takes us to the fourth measure. And here, we just drop that uh, second fret note back down. We're back in our first chord position. Couple basic drums. The next two measures, the 5th and 6th measure, um, you could just do the tune where the 5th and 6th measure repeat exactly what you played in the 1st and 2nd measure. Uh, but I went ahead and included a couple variations that Chris showed me when he was teaching me the tune. So we'll go ahead and cover those right now. So measure number 5 is a variation on measure number 1. Doing some hammer-ons. And a pull-off at the end. These are all just the notes of the chord on the left hand. We're just opening the strings for the first two notes. Instead of hitting that third fret, we open it up, hammer it on. Same with the third string. Knock down on some open strings. And then a pull off. Familiar pull off there from the second fret. Notice how I kind of keep that chord shape there the whole time. I just work with it. takes us to measure six, and here, like I said, we have a variation of measure number two. Measure number two is like this. Chris introduced me to an interesting way to add some interest here. You would play this ghost note, and this is different than what I call phantom strokes. Uh, this is just a left hand alternate string pull-off. That's what I usually call these. Um, so you take your strum, just like you would do in measure two, but then the second time through we change it a little. We go boom, 
shika, boom, shika, boom, shika. So if you ignore that ghost note, it's exactly the same as measure two. Boom, shika, boom, shika. And that's what your right hand does, exactly that, just two basic strums. What happens is, right there in the uh, second basic strum, you go ahead and do a left hand pull off. You have your finger down on that second fret first string, you go ahead and pull it off, pluck it open. Then you put that finger right back down for the, in time to finish the strum. So just the second half of that measure with that ghost note in there will look and sound like this. So you can practice that, you can just go boom, chicka, boom, chicka, then try to get that note in between. Boom, note, chicka, boom, pluck, chicka. Hope that makes sense. I'll play that whole measure for you a couple times, measure six. slower. Alright, that's a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. If it's a little tough at first, don't worry. It's a little awkward, but you can pick it up pretty quickly if you give it a little consistent practice and focus. Let's go ahead and move on to measure number seven. Here we introduce a, a third kind of chord shape here if you count our home chord and our second fret on the first string is two chord shapes. Here's another one. If you play guitar at all, this looks like a D7 chord on a guitar moved up a fret. If you don't play guitar, then you can ignore that information. And just know that we have the second finger on the third fret third string, first finger on the second fret second string, third finger on the third fret first string. Makes a little triangle. And we play out of that for a second. Just for that first basic strum, we hold the chord shape. Then you can let it go. Drop, drop thumb. All right, whole measure. And the eighth measure, we just, again, go back to our home chord, just do a couple basic strums. That's the A part. Of course, you would repeat that and then you would move on to the B part. So let's do that right now. Take a look at measure number nine. Starting again in our home chord shape. I told you we'd be working out of this most of the time. Now we're going to do some start with a basic strum, focusing on the first string, third fret note. Boom, chicka. Some drop thumb action. Drop thumb on the first two strings, then we catch the second fret on the third string whole measure sounds like this. The tenth measure is just the same as the second measure of the A part. Go to that second fret first string, do a couple strums. Third measure, you want to jump back again to your home chord shape. Basic strum, drop thumb, pull off. Really similar to our ninth measure, uh, but this is the third measure of the B part, actually the eleventh measure of the tune. So the twelfth measure, back to our home chord shape. We never really left it. And we just do a couple basic strums. 13th measure is the same as the 9th measure. And then we get to the 14th measure. This is the same as the variation we did in the A part on measure 6. So we have our first finger on the 2nd fret 1st string. We're going to do that ghost note inside the two basic strums. Boom, chicka, boom, a chicka. Move on to measure 15. This should look familiar to you. 
as well as measure 16. So the last two measures of the B part are the same as the last two measures of the A part. I'll go ahead and play uh, the whole thing nice and slowly all the way through just the way it's written in the tab. <laughs> 